Times, they are changing, and nowhere is that more evident than in the workplace. No longer satisfied with simply collecting a paycheck. Today's job seekers want more, much more. They want the work to be meaningful, but they also want to find employers whose corporate cultures align with their own values and ideals. Our next guest knows about this shift firsthand. After a particularly lengthy and challenging job search, Nina Chung created a job search site. Hi Ho puts human needs, life preferences, and company culture at the center of the job hunt. As co-founder and CEO, Nina is committed to fulfilling Hi Ho's vision that nobody should be unhappy with their job. Nina believes employee happiness should be considered a basic human right. Nina Chung is here to share her own career adventures and misadventures and to tell us how Hi Ho aims to disrupt the job search landscape. Welcome to Full Frame. Thank you for having me. Let me ask you about this. I guess everybody that I can think of probably has a story about a horrible job experience or a horrible job search. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have both? I do have both. <laughs> and <laughs> is that why me. you're sitting here today? I mean, is that what Definitely. led to this in a, in a sense? Yeah. Um, so I graduated college in 2008, which was a particularly difficult time for young job seekers. Um, Actually, in the fall of 2007, I received a job offer and signed on to work at Bear Stearns, which is one of the large investment banks in New York at the time. Um, ultimately, that bank ended up collapsing, and I became a refugee of you know, Wall Street before I even started working. So after that, it was just extremely difficult for me to find a job, and I was spending eight hours or more a day applying for jobs online, speaking to people, and nothing really worked out. So I've used pretty much every job search site there was at the time. Um, and finally, after a year and a half, I did end up getting back into investment banking. Um, but that was, you know, a very long, arduous, exhausting process. So I haven't forgotten what that was like. And um, combined with some of my um, not great job experiences, it really led to the culmination of high hope. So I guess going through that whole, I got to find a job, you availed yourself of probably everything out there yes. and probably saw a lot of the shortcomings. I mean, what were some of the things that kind of hit you as you were going through the process that, geez, if I could change this, yeah. this is what I'd change? Well, I think um, a lot of job sites out there don't really focus on millennial job seekers at all, which is unfortunate because as of 2015, millennials are now the majority of the workforce. So um, they tend to focus on things like pay or job title or, you know, um, the largeness of a company, for example, size of a company. Um, but for a lot of millennials, that's not what they care about. Um, we, I can say that because I consider myself millennial, but um, we care more about things like company culture or level flexibility that a company would offer you, um, and you know, work-life balance or work-life harmony. So those things just typically aren't reflected um, on any of these competitor sites. Is it because you look at your parents and say, you know, I'm not going to go that route? I mean, why? Because yeah. I think what you're saying is so right on target. I've got two millennials uh, myself, and and it is. It's an entirely different way of looking at the landscape. Right. Definitely. Um, Gen, Gen Xers, I guess is what they're called, or baby boomers, um, they definitely have a different perception of what a job should be. A lot of people think that a job is to put food on the table, um, and they're more interested in pay, um, getting a promotion, advancing in the work workplace, excuse me. Um, and also, I think a lot of uh, millennials have had to deal with parents who are divorced. And because of that, they've seen firsthand what the impact of having a life filled only with work can really lead to. So they want to avoid that as well as, um, you know, just having this all consuming lifestyle of work and no play. And one of the other things you have to do when you enter business is uh, look at the landscape and see who your competitors are and, and what they offer. So I thought maybe we could walk through We've picked four uh, job search engines. Maybe we can go through each and kind of talk about what their characteristics are, and then maybe we can come back to you and talk to you about mm -hmm. how you differ. So we'll start with Indeed, and this kind of maps out. It's a traditional job board. You can get in, you can type in certain words, those keyword searches, and a lot of different industries uh, available there. So that. How would you call that? What kind of a model? Is that more just traditional? Which it's a pretty traditional job board. Um, it's keyword based and you basically type in something like paralegal in New York and then it spits out thousands of job searches or job search results. So we looked at one. Let's take a look at our second, uh, which I believe is hired. This is a different model though, isn't it? It's kind of the reverse, isn't it? It is the reverse. So um, 
I think they only accept 5% of candidates who apply. Um, you basically upload your resume and a few details about yourself, and they tell you whether you're accepted into the program, and after that, companies can decide if they want to speak with you or not. So the first one, I guess you would kind of call it a cattle call. Everybody's out there. Right. The second is more geared towards the company. They kind of help uh, whittle it down, in right. a sense, for them. Yeah. Let's take a look at our third. Um, this one's really kind of going towards your market, in a yeah, sense. A little in bit. That uh, it's it's basically aiming at social good mission is what jumps out at me, which is also a, a, a structure of millennials too, isn't it? I mean, they yes. really want to make a difference in the world. Right. Um, millennials do list one of their priorities as um, having a purpose or a mission on the workforce, um, in the workplace rather. So um, idealist is, you know, pretty ideal actually for millennials. And of course the fourth is LinkedIn and I think everybody in the universe is on LinkedIn now. I'm not sure everybody knows how to use it or, or what it's all about, but it's a professional networking uh, used by recruiters and the headhunters and uh, also job postings. So when you looked at the landscape and you saw these four, we're just taking them as an example, where were the pockets where you saw where they weren't connecting the dots where you think you can? So actually most of these focus on a different demographic from us. Um, we really focus on specifically millennial job seekers in the age group of roughly 24 to 32. So um, a lot of these either are more general or um, not exactly the target we're going for. So um, part of that is age. Um, and another is really the priorities that come with being a millennial and having this mindset. So um, we do give people a lot more options in terms of what they can prioritize in the job search. Um, normally if you go on to say Indeed and you're doing a job search for a paralegal, as I mentioned before, um, oftentimes you get a spit out of you know, thousands of job searches or job search results. Um, and they're not prioritized in a way that's meaningful or purposeful. So um, the way that they structure it oftentimes is that companies that pay the most end up having their job search results the highest. So it's not really um, keeping the job seekers' best interests in mind. It's much more focused on the companies. And what we're trying to do is give job seekers you know, a little bit more leeway and a little bit more benefits there. You're kind of jostling the uh, work world in a sense. Uh, a, a good friend of mine is the director of this broadcast. We always laugh about one of his bosses who would uh, see people conversing and, no more talking, get back to work. Uh, this concept of happiness is a human right. There are a lot of bosses who don't, <laughs> don't think that should be a human right, where it's crack the whip. Uh, how do you change that mindset, do you think? And why do you see it as a, as a basic uh, human right to be happy at the workplace? Yeah, well, um, I think, you know, the more I looked at it, the more happiness at work seemed to be synonymous with happiness in life because we are spending so much time in the workplace, um, probably, you know, a third to half our lives and the majority of our waking hours. Um, and even with, uh, you know, technology, smartphones, what have you, you're pretty much on call 24-7. Um, at least that's what it feels like to me oftentimes. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a much more blurred line of what, work and life means and to that extent if you're trying to be happy in life which is kind of the goal of any human being um, and you know the goal of human nature I would say um, then why not seek happiness in the workplace as well so this is um, I think it's a newer concept but it's something that a lot of Millennials have come away with after the recession and you know what they had to suffer through in this more scarcity based mindset where really employers were king. I think now employees have much more power and they can go ahead and you know make some decisions that they didn't really feel empowered to make a few years before. You know it's interesting you worked at Bear Stearns and, and I mean Wall Street's not a stone's throw away from here. Uh, most people on Wall Street would tell you that you know no it's the shareholders that's right. most important. Uh, uh, my boss would tell me that it's the viewers that, that are more important, customers, however you break it down. But you have this sense that if an employee's happy, that it does benefit the company and the shareholder. The, so give me your thoughts on that, because it, it, I guess if we're all miserable, perhaps we're not, uh, we're not, our work is probably not as strong as if we're happy, right? I mean, yeah, it actually makes a big impact, um, happiness and employee engagement to a company's bottom line. So um, it's been proven that an employee who is happier and more engaged at work tends to take less sick days. There's also lower um, or higher retention, I guess you can say, um, lower turnover. So people who are more engaged and feel happier at work tend to leave a job less easily. And actually the number one reason people leave a job is due to company culture. 
Um, and when you're looking at millennials who have much higher turnover than previous generations, it's extremely costly for companies to constantly have to hire replacements. Um, it's about fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollars every time a company needs to replace a millennial employee. So that cost really adds up, um, along with the other things I've mentioned. And um, overall, companies that have better cultures and you know employees who are more engaged, they tend to reach their goals faster and um, better. I guess you can say so. Um, there's a lot of reasons why a company would want their employees to be engaged. I read a, a piece in, in a, a new in a magazine. I think it was last year where uh, HR people were starting to complain about uh, younger employees that you know they they didn't mind the you know setting up yoga, but now <laughs> one kid wants karate, nobody else does, and why do I have to do all of this stuff? Uh, do you think you're going to run up? against that kind of mindset and uh, is that something that they're just going to have to get used to? I mean you're going to have to offer these uh, right. perks. So right now you see a lot of that in Silicon Valley and in the tech startup space where I think there's a particularly insane uh, war for talent, especially with people with a technical background. So it hasn't necessarily reached corporate America yet, but I think you know, given that millennials are now the majority of the workforce, um, it will become a bigger issue. and. Corporate America will have to catch up sooner or later. Um, yeah, so it's it's a matter of time. I think it, it, it's funny that you say that because this person was from the Silicon Valley and they were just right. ready to rip their hair out. But I guess <laughs> yeah. if you're competing for that kind of talent and the pool isn't that uh, big, you almost have to do this, don't you? Yes, you do. Um, and actually, Wall Street Journal published a very interesting article. Um, I think it was called like the lavish perks of today's startups or something along those lines. Um, but it talked about how. You know, companies now have a happiness manager. They have people who are willing to do whatever it takes to get companies or to get people to come on board, whether that's, um, you know, catered lunches or yoga studios, as you mentioned, um, or just, you know, unlimited vacations, very flexible work policies. Um, so that's definitely something that's very prevalent in Silicon Valley, and I think that culture will trickle down into the rest of America. Do you think you can go too far? Um, I don't know, maybe, <laughs> but um, ultimately, you know, there's there's a balance because companies know that it does pay to have workers happy and to have workers engaged, and if you're keeping people at the office longer and keeping them happy at the office longer, um, then they'll also be more likely to produce good work and you know to stay there longer as well. Two final questions, and I'll, I'll pair them. Uh, what advice would you give to a millennial right now who's out there looking for a job but doesn't want to settle for something? You know, they, they want to find that perfect fit. And what do you say to the parent of that child who has them living in their basement who just <laughs> wants them to get a job and get out and start their life? Yeah, well, um, because that's what you see, yeah, isn't it? I mean, yeah, millennials are much more likely to not take on a job and you know be slightly miserable versus taking on a job they don't like and be very miserable. Um, I would say for millennials that they should probably consider um, talking to people that they can get honest feedback from. So uh, if you go into a company, I would ask to speak to their most junior employees. I think they're most likely to be candid with you and to offer some, you know, good advice or um, give you the landscape of what, you know, the HR and the management is like there. Um, I also think, and this is a piece of advice I got from uh, senior citizens when I was working with healthcare real estate and senior living um, nursing homes and such. Um, so the number one regret of seniors on their deathbed was that they wish they'd had the courage to live a life that was true to themselves and not a life that you know they thought someone else wanted them to live. So I would definitely tell these people that they should be true to themselves and to evaluate and reevaluate their priorities because it'll change many times throughout their career. And to the parents, um, I would just say to be patient. I think this is, uh, it's, you know, students are for the first time, or millennials are for the first time, um, worse off than their parents are. I think it's actually the first time in over a century. So um, it isn't easy for millennials these days either. And, you know, a lot of them have a lot of debt and they feel the pressure as well. So I would say to be patient. And I think my story is also a testament to that. Nina, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. And good advice. Coming up next, have you hailed a cab lately? Your options for a hired ride are growing. And our next guest is adding a feminine touch. We'll be right back.